everyone. Um, welcome to today's Australian Digital Health Agency webinar. Today's discussion title is My Health Records for Receptionists and Administration Staff. We are pleased to welcome our presenters for today, Michelle Breed and Nicola Graham. This webinar is live and interactive. You are encouraged to participate by posting questions to the presenter, which can be typed in the chat box located at the bottom left-hand side of your screen. All questions will be answered throughout and at the end of the presentation. And we also encourage you to complete the feedback survey by clicking on the yellow icon also located in the top right corner of your screen. If you are experiencing difficulties hearing the sound during this webinar, please dial the 1-800 support number listed at the bottom of your screen. I'd now like to pass it to Michelle to begin. Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and country of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to them and their cultures and to elders both past and present. Today we would like to commence with understanding who is joining us from across Australia. Please select the type of health organisations you work in. Thank you. Redback. For poll question number two, we would just um, we would also like you to indicate how often you use the My Health Record in your day-to-day -day work. Redback. Okay, so let's commence our webinar today. We will cover current My Health Record statistics. We will briefly go over what the My Health Record is, interacting with the record, what's new, My Health Record policies and security, and what is the receptionist and frontline staff role within the My Health Record. There are seven pillars in the National Digital Health Strategy Roadmap. They have been co-designed with all states and territories and agreed by COAG Health Council. These foundations will enhance models of care, the importance of developing interoperability across systems, improving data quality and coding, increasing secure messaging capability. Today we are going to discuss your role in the My Health Record. As of April 2019, 90% of Australians have a My Health Record. Approximately 15,900 healthcare provider organisations are also registered, including 7,100 GP organisations, 832 public and 188 private hospitals, 4,730 community pharmacies, 236 aged care facility services and 2,750 other organisations. In the My Health Record system, there are in excess of 20 million clinical documents uploaded by private and public providers. This includes 10 million pathology reports and 2.1 million diagnostic imaging reports. There are also 49 million prescription and dispense record in the My Health Record system. The majority of this clinical content is being contributed to by general practices and pharmacies. So what is the My Health Record? It is a summary of the individual's key health information. It is part of a national system. It is personally controlled, which is a key element of the My Health Record. Consumers have a say as to whether they have a My Health Record, what is in it and who can access it. It is accessible at all times, as you would expect from an electronic system. It is private, protected by legislation, primarily the My Health Record Act, and it is secure through multiple layers of international best practice IT security. For example, we have a cyber security centre which monitors, maintains and improves the system 24-7. With almost all of the Australian population now with a My Health Record, healthcare providers have access to a wide range of health information sources 
that will support better health outcomes. My health record is only a copy of information that is currently held in the patient's local healthcare system. It's important to remember that over time and as more and more healthcare providers get connected to the system, the records will have more clinical information in them. It is important to understand how each healthcare organisation contributes to a person's My Health record. When your doctor, nurse, specialist has asked you to find information, you will be able to let them know to check the patient's My Health record. I will go through with you now how each healthcare organisation interacts. So when, for example, the GP requests that you chase up the latest discharge summary, you will know that they can also find it in the, my, in the patient's My Health record. So let's go through this now. A GP who is the patient's nominated healthcare provider uploads a shared health summary. If they have a visiting patient, they could upload an event summary. Hospitals are uploading discharge summaries, pathology and diagnostic imaging. The majority of both public and private hospitals across all states and territories are connected. Pathology and diagnostic imaging providers are contributing to the My Health record. Currently 31% of pathology labs are uploading reports to the My Health record across both public and private. And we're expecting to see 80% by the end of 2019. An allied health professional, for example, a dietitian, may upload an event summary if the patient has a significant healthcare event that is relevant to another provider to provide care to the patient. Pharmacists upload dispense information and can also, if the dispensing functionality allows, upload allergies. Currently 80% of Australia's community pharmacies are uploading to the My Health record. Aged care facilities can upload an event summary. There is ongoing work, however, with uh, specialists, allied health and aged care facilities to enable greater connection. To summarise, there are three sources of information that can be entered into the My Health record. Firstly is the healthcare provider entered data, clinical documents such as health summaries, event summaries, pathology results. Secondly, there is the Medicare sourced information including claims data, PBS data, Australian Immunisation Register, Australian Organ Donor Register and DVA claiming events. And thirdly is the patient entered data, personal health notes, personal medications, analogies and summaries, child development information and advanced care plans may be added to the My Health record. The, some of the, um, the other clinical documents that can be found in the My Health record are the um, pathology and diagnostic imaging reports, prescription records, dispense records, specialist letters and e-referrals, although they are still in development. Medicines View is also another important document that um, summarises medicines from all sources. The Pharmacist Shared Medication Medicines List is the newest document that the agency is developing to be uploaded to the My Health Record. This project will be released in two stages. It will contain a list of medicines that a patient may be taking, including those prescribed by a patient's doctor and also those non-prescriptions over the counter um, other uh, drugs that they might be taking. The sources um, that will be included and contributing are listed here for your information. My Health Record Policies. The My Health Record Act of 2012 outlines when and how health information included in the My Health Record can be collected, used and disclosed. My Health Record Act establishes the roles and functions of the system operator, a registration framework for individuals and entities such as a healthcare provider, organisations to participate in the system 
and a privacy framework aligned with the Privacy Act of 1988, specifying which entities can access and use information in the system and the penalties that can be imposed on improper use of this information. My health record policies apply to you when you work in a registered healthcare organisation. As a receptionist, you need to know about your participation obligations. You need to understand how to use the My Health Record system accurately and responsibly. The legal obligations for an individual using the system and the consequences of breaching these obligations. You should also know the process to inform management regarding any suspected security or privacy issues or breaches of the My Health Record system. Your practice manager should provide training and if you haven't had any training yet, please check with your manager. Healthcare organisations can also contact their primary health network to assist in providing further education in these areas or you can refer to the links in this presentation for further information. My health record privacy and security. The key messages around um, the privacy and security, the My Health Record system is supported by a legislative framework which sets controls around who can access the system and the information contained within. On November the 26th last year, the Australian Government passed a number of amendments to existing legislation which we have outlined on the slide above. These were in response to feedback from the community for even stronger privacy and security protections for people using the My Health Record. I will go through the majority of the eight points that were strengthened. All records, have been all records that have been cancelled previously will also now be permanently deleted from the system. The use of the My Health Record for insurance and employment purposes is not authorised. Only healthcare providers involved in providing care to a patient are authorised to access a My Health record. These new measures make it clear that insurers and employers are prohibited from using information within a My Health record or requesting disclosure of a My Health record information for insurance or employment purposes. Under the agency's operating policy, no information within the My Health record can be released to law enforcement agencies or government agencies without an order from a judicial officer. To date, the agency has not received such a request and has never released any information. Strength and protection for victims of domestic and family violence. These are currently safeguards in place to protect victims of domestic and family violence. Under the changes, the agency will no longer be obliged to notify people of certain decisions if doing so would put another person at risk. We make it clear that the system operator cannot delegate functions to an entity other than an employer of the Department of Health or the Chief Executive of Medicare. And we've also made it very clear that the system cannot be privatised or commercialised. Since the inception of the My Health Record in 2012, there has never been a known breach of the My Health Record. Computer security is often divided into three distinct master categories, commonly referred to as controls, physical, technical and administrative. Physical control is the implementation of security measures in a defined structure used to deter or prevent unauthorised access to sensitive material. Examples of physical control are location of the computer, closed circuit surveillance cameras, picture IDs and biometrics including fingerprint, voice or face recognition. Technical controls are technology, sorry, technical controls use technology as a basis for controlling the access and usage of sensitive data throughout a physical structure and over a network. Technical controls are far reaching in scope and encompass such technologies as encryption, smart cards, network, network authentication, passwords, login, access controls list, file integrity, auditing software. 
Administrative controls define the human factors of security. It involves all level of personnel within an organisation and determine which users have access to what resources and information by such means. Training and awareness, disaster preparedness and recovery plans. Personnel recruitment and separation strategies. Personnel registration and accounting and related relevant and updated policies. There are some controls at the consumer level which are integral feature of the My Health Record. A consumer can choose to restrict access to specific documents in the My Health Record by establishing what we call an LDAC, which is a limited document access code. They can restrict access to their entire record by establishing a restricted access code and that will mean that only organisations given the code can access any part of the My Health Record. In an emergency, a clinician can exercise a break glass facility, but all instances are monitored and recorded. Individuals can subscribe to SMS or email alerts that report in real time when a new healthcare provider organisation accesses their My Health Record. But it's important to remember that all instances of access to the My Health Record are monitored and logged. Currently, the number of individuals opting to use these privacy settings is fewer than two out of every thousand individuals registered. And where an individual has opted to use privacy settings, healthcare organisations do not have to be granted access to a My Health Record in order to upload to it. The following are some points to consider in relation to patient access and control. A patient can remove but not edit a document uploaded by a provider. When attempting to remove a document, the patient will receive a system generated warning that this action may have an impact on their care. Healthcare providers will not be notified that a document has been removed or that access to a document has been restricted by a patient. However, if they are the author of the removed document, when you access the patient's My Health Record, this will be indicated to you in the document list. Patients can view the access history of their My, of their My Health Record and see which organisation accessed and made changes to their record. So it's very transparent. If someone with a My Health Record has a legal guardian or a carer, then that person can become what we, what we refer to as an authorised representative to curate the My Health Record on the consumer's behalf. Note that um, general practice staff or any staff would not have this responsibility on behalf of a patient or resident. An authorised representative is a person who has applied to and satisfied the system operator that they have parental or legal authority or is otherwise appropriate to act on behalf of an individual. A nominated representative is a person that has been chosen by an individual to assist with managing the individual's My Health Record. There are various levels of access permissions that can be granted. This is a screenshot from the consumer portal. On the agency's website, there are step-by-step -step guides explaining how to perform these functions and also a consumer portal simulator, which is, which is accessible through the on-demand training. This will allow you to simulate performing these functions. I would like to pause here for a moment and pass over to my colleague, Nicola Graham. Um, and we'll also review some of the questions that, that have been asked to this point. Thank you, Michelle. Um, we do actually have a question. Um, should a GP prescribe a medication on day one, the patient goes to hospital on day two, and the prescription gets changed, and then on a discharge goes back to a specialist who changes the medication again. How easy will it be to know the current medication by looking at the My Health Record? Okay, so I did refer to a document that's located in the My Health Record and we, we call it Medicines View. 
Medicines View is a document that can be viewed from all the clinical software systems as well as the national provider portal. What that Medicines View does is it it's the only document that, that summarises all the medicines from all those different clinical documents. So you mentioned that there'd be um, the prescribed medication from the GP. There may also be a shared health summary from the GP. Then when they went to hospital, there might have been um, prescribed information from the hospital as well as dispensed from the community pharmacy and also hopefully a discharge summary. And then also the specialist making a change as well. So you can see that the medicines is such an important area, but the medicines view document would be able to reflect um, all of that activity if in fact all those, um, you know, all those key healthcare providers were connected obviously to the My Health Record. I hope that covers that. Thanks, Michelle. Um, and another one, if a patient asks me to cancel their My Health Record, how do I do this? Okay, so it's important to understand that you as reception and frontline staff, we're actually not able to do that on behalf of a consumer. Um, the consumer can delete their record and how they would access that is they would either, if they don't have access to um, to a computer and they haven't already logged, uh, linked their My Health Record through MyGov, then they could call the system operator and you will find that number either on the My Health Record website or on any of the brochures that you probably have in your practice, but it's certainly not the role of a receptionist or any admin staff to be cancelling the record. It really is a, a patient control that they have to do. All right, thank you, Michelle. That's um, all the questions for now. So um, okay, let's go great. through. Thanks. So let's go through how providers can engage with My Health Record. These three health identifiers are the underlying foundation of the My Health Record in that they provide information on a healthcare event for auditing and security. The first of the identifiers is the IHI, Individual Healthcare Identifier. And this identifies who receives the service. The number is automatically issued to a consumer with a Medicare or DVA card. The next identifier is a HPII, Healthcare Provider Identifier Individual. This in identifies who provided the service. And the number is issued by UPRA to its members and it can be applied for, mem applied for by members of non-UPRA registered practitioners. The final one is a HPIO, Healthcare Provider Identifier Organisation. It identifies where the service was received. This number is issued as part of the registration process of an organisation. Now it's important to remember that only authorised individuals from registered healthcare provider organisations who are involved in a person's care are allowed by law to access a patient's My Health record. Authorised clinicians are only able to view the My Health Record via one of the following ways. Firstly, through conformance clinical software. One example displayed on the left is medical director and for example for a pharmacy they would use dispensing software like Minfos. The other way to access records is displayed on the right. Now this is the national provider portal. It allows for viewing downloading and printing. However, the provider will not be able to contribute any information. The My Health Record rules state healthcare provider organisations must have a policy on who is authorised to access the records and that they must educate their staff on how to use the My Health Record system accurately and responsibly, including their legal obligations when using the system and the consequences of breaching those obligations. The My Health Record rules also state healthcare provider organisations must employ reasonable user account management practices around access to My Health Record, including identifying when staff access records. Information in the My Health Record is to aid clinical decision making. Medical officers should rely on their own clinical judgment when using third party information. 
The My Health Record does not replace existing communication methods with the patient or other healthcare providers. Healthcare provider organisations are required by privacy law and confidentiality practice to ensure that healthcare records in their organisation are only accessed by people who need to access them. Now this requirement extends to their management of access to the record and legislation specific to My Health Record providing additional protections. They are required to ensure that their IT systems and the information they hold is kept safe and secure. There are professional associations and colleges such as the AMA and the RACGP who provide guidance to their members on how to meet these obligations. Reckless or intentional misuse may be subject to penalties of up to $315,000 and five years jail. Providers are under an obligation to take reasonable steps to upload accurate and up-to-date information. Now, this is an obligation that exists already when sharing patient information with other providers. So let's look at the role of the receptionist and front desk staff. Every person in the team has a responsibility. Receptionists and frontline staff are a pivotal point in the practice. You are often the first person sought when others need something done or if further information is required. Now this is an example of a practice workflow. So when could the receptionist discuss my health record with a patient? So for example, when a new patient calls for an appointment, you could add that the practice uses my health record or even when the patient presents for their appointment. And when you arrive your patients, the process is to check three forms of identification. Now this is a good time to remind the patient that the practice uses My Health Record. We all have those very familiar patients, you know, the ones that are often at the practice, they almost seem like family, so it's quite hard to ask them for identification or to update their details. So how do you check and make sure that the details are up to date? My health record is a great excuse to be able to make sure that nothing has changed, explaining that the practice uses my health records and that you just need to make sure all their details are up to date. If you have some my health record brochures displayed on your reception desk for your patients, you can then give them one as you send them to wait for the doctor. Sometimes you may want to help more. You know, we always have those special patients that you just go the extra mile for. So if you have time, explain what My Health Record is and how it benefits them. And importantly, encourage them to get their doctor to upload a shared health summary. As part of your day, you may often get requests from clinicians to chase pathology results or discharge summary from the hospital for, the, for their patient. The patient may be with them at the time or they may be requesting for one that's coming in for an appointment soon. This is also another great time to remind the clinician that they can check the patient's My Health Record for the pathology result or discharge summary and much more. If the doctor is not sure about what's on the record, you will be able to advise them. Another request that's often made is to call Medicare to find out if a patient is eligible for, say, um, a care plan. Now, this is another good time to remind the doctor that they would be able to very quickly get this information from the patient's My Health Record under the Medicare data tab. One of the receptionist's roles is to make sure that the patient's IHI is validated in the demographic data. Now this is important to enable access to the My Health record. You should do this when you arrive your patient and check your Medicare details. It is easy to check if the health identifier is present and if not, simply select validate um, and then that will do that for you. Now, We've got on here an example where the IHI is located in best practice. And in medical director, the IHI is normally automatically entered. However, it is really good to know how to validate should you need to. So what happens when the IHI won't validate? And I don't know if any of you have had this problem, but there are some possible reasons why it won't and sometimes it can also affect the Medicare billing ability. Sometimes consumer data in the clinical information system may not match the record at the HI service. You should always check the first name, surname, date of birth, gender and Medicare DVA details. Also a good idea to check spellings of names 
and also shortened versions. For example, you know, Ben instead of Benjamin, or you know, they've got Bill, but they're really William, or Elizabeth, but they they use Liz. Some cultures also have their name translated into English, and it doesn't match with Medicare records. And they also um, have their surname before their last name. This is really why it's so important to view the Medicare card when checking your patients in. Now, if all this has been confirmed, and you have checked with the patient and it still won't validate, you can always check with the practice manager to check the patient details and HPOS. If you either are not able to check HPOS or the problem is still not resolved, the patient will simply have to check with Medicare. Now, another problem you may encounter that there be no IHIs able to be validated in the system. Now, this is most likely a technical issue, that there may not be uh, any internet connection or the PKI site certificate and or the NAS certificates could be expired. So what to do if the patient doesn't have a My Health record? And as Michelle mentioned earlier, on the 26th of November, the Australian Government passed a number of amendments to the existing legislation. One in particular allows for the permanent deletion of a record. At the end of January, nine out of 10 Australians had a record created for them. However, you still may encounter a patient who has opted out or chose to permanently delete their record. They may have now changed their mind and didn't understand the benefits because you'll have explained it all to them and would now like to have one created for them. Now this process is called assisted registration. To provide assisted registration, your organisation must be registered as a healthcare provider organisation with the My Health Record system and use a clinical software which has the assisted registration functionality. Your practice may have staff dedicated to providing the service or performing it just amongst their other duties. The staff member must be authorised and have had training so that the assisted registration can be provided on behalf of the organisation. And depending on the workflow of your practice, other staff such as your clinicians could also do the registration. Now importantly, legislation requires your organisation to have a policy in place that reasonably addresses how it will authorise employees to provide this registration and the training that will be provided before an employee is authorised. Your practice must have a My Health Record System policy which includes assisted registration practices as required under the My Health Record Rules of 2016. Now this is just an example in best practice which shows where the assisted registration, a registration tab is located. You can also access the agency's on-demand training portal to practice. So you just select your software and all the passwords and everything are provided and it will even give you instructions. But there are other ways uh, for your patient that can re record, uh, re register themselves. You don't have to do it in practice if you don't simply have the time. Now this is through MyGov and it is an easy process. You might like to print out some MyGov brochures and have them there to give to the patient along with your My Health Record brochure. So let's look at some useful resources. This is the on-demand training portal and it's available on the agency's website. It gives access for healthcare organisations to practice how to view and upload information into a patient's My Health record. And it also has the assisted registration in there. As frontline staff, this gives you the ability to practice the assisted registration and you'll also be able to understand from a clinician's perspective how to perform the other functions. Now this will be particularly helpful when you are requested to provide assistance to your healthcare providers. And another idea would be to print out the summary sheets which can be left in the lunchroom or in each of the clinician's rooms. You'll also find on the agency's website helpful modules, e-learning e modules and other a lot of information including a link to uh, ordering brochures and resources for your practices. You can also contact your local primary health network who can provide further training to either a group or even one-on-one -on -one as required. So Michelle, are there any questions? Um, one you've just covered which was how do I um, obtain brochures 
um, yep. and brochures on maybe how do you, how does a patient access their MyGov account. The actual question is, do I have to help a patient log into their MyGov account? And I think um, we do have brochures for that. So you've you've basically covered where they would find all that information on our website. Yeah. Um, right. One one other question is, how do I enter my or how do I enter a HIPAA into the system? Um, so that would normally be the practice manager's job to put the HPII. Now the HPII is, uh, belongs to the practitioner or the provider um, and that is entered through the user setup. So when you're setting up the practice um, staff, you would enter in there the HPII under user and you'd also check the um, ability to uh, allow access to the My Health record. But that's really um, not for practice um, frontline staff, that's actually for your practice managers. Yep, okay. Um, I'll just have a look, have a couple. No, I think you've covered, you've covered that one. Um, All right. Sorry, I'm just scrolling through. One more, just... No, I think we're right. We've covered we've covered everything. So thank you. All right, lovely. Um so that concludes the presentation. Thank you everybody for attending and I'll hand over to Redbag. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you to all our speakers for your presentation and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. Please complete our current survey which you'll be direct redirected to very shortly. We thank you in advance for your feedback and wish you a great afternoon.